Hi, my name is Martin Mugley, and I'm one of Christina Boucher's PhD students. Today, I'm going to discuss work by our international research team on succinct colored de Bruijn grass. First, we'll begin with the motivating biological question being studied by biologists here at CSU. Antibiotic resistance is receiving a lot of media attention because it is seen as a serious public health threat. For example, infections from a resistant form of staph, known as MRSA, caused close to 10,000 deaths in the U.S. in 2011. The use of antibiotics in food production is often cited as one of the key causes of resistant infections in humans, as shown in these infograms from the WHO and CDC. The assumption is that continuous exposure to antibiotics provides selective pressure, killing off most bacteria, while a few with some resistant mechanisms survive and continue to multiply. However, this concern and various ensuing policies stem from an oversimplified view of antibiotic resistance. This view has focused just on two specific areas, but the system is far more complex. Thus, discontinuing the use of antibiotics without fully understanding the risks can result in harmful unintended, con unintended consequences. Thus, we wish to check this assumption empirically. We collected samples across a real food production system in cattle. We also curated a database of genes known to aid antimicrobial resistance under some circumstances. There are many AMR mechanisms in which many uh, microbes interact, um, and these evolve across environments and time. By aligning samples to known genes, we can observe the evolution of this complex relationship. So given that we want to find alignments amongst a massive number of known genes and samples, we need an efficient data structure. De Bruijn graphs are the foundation of our structure. They are constructed from all the k-length substrings, known as k-mers, from a longer string. We'll use t in this example. For the length 4 substring shown in red, we take the k-1 prefix and k-1 suffix, shown overlapping in the lower left as, as vertices. We, we add an edge connecting them, which represents the full former. Edges are shown with the letter shifted into the origin label from the right to form the destination la label. Vertices, vertices sharing identical labels are glued together. The structure of a colored de Bruijn graph is the union of each sample's graph while maintaining a color for each sample. Here, purple represents vertices that exist in both the subgraphs and represent portions that align identically. Mismatches form bubbles where vertices have only one color. This compactly enco encodes the pairwise alignments amongst many sequences, but it doesn't scale enough. Thus, we turn to succinct data structures. The Burroughs Wheeler transform of, of a string is a permutation of its symbols. They are sorted according to the immediately following suff suffix of each letter. The left box illustrates these sorted suffixes, just like a suffix array. The right box shows the preceding character of each suffix and is the BWT. Each position in the BWT corresponds to a suffix in a suffix array. The BWT com combined with auxiliary data structures is known as an FM index. It encodes a relationship between a suffix and its immediately preceding suffix. The relationship can be transfer, uh, traversed, as shown in, by the blue arrows, in four iterations of a process known as backward search. The FM index can be extended to the de Bruijn graphs, as shown here. The BWT, denoted as, as column W, represents the edge relationships amongst vertices, and can be traversed much like backward search, but with the aid of annotated hyphens and the column L. To support multiple columns, we introduce a matrix of bits, shown at the bottom right. Rows are colors, and columns are the edges. A 1 den denotes a color being absent. This induces large runs of zeros for highly homologous populations, and can be compactly encoded. With our implementation, we were able to represent the color de Bruijn graph in 26 gigs of RAM, while existing software would require over 3 terabytes. We are currently working on external methods to reduce the construction memory. We'll conclude with the members of our team. Here's the microbial ecology group at CSU. And here are uh, mostly computer scientists from our international team, as well as another biologist. Thank you.